Hi, I'm Jim Steed. I've been asked by the Pyrethroid Working Group and the Department of Pesticide Regulation to help demonstrate some methods of applying pesticides to the exteriors of homes and businesses that are in compliance with the new California pyrethroid regulations. The purpose of these regulations is to help keep pesticides on target areas and to help protect the water quality of nearby waterways. In this video, I'll highlight compliance with the regulations and some additional best management practices that will assist you in minimizing the potential for runoff into aquatic habitats. There are 17 active ingredients that are affected by these regulations. A clear understanding of these regulations will help you to provide effective service for your customers as well as stay in compliance with the regulations. And it'll limit pesticide runoff into California's waterways. The most important thing for you to understand is that you still are required to follow the product label. You need to have proper protective equipment and follow the instructions on the label. You now are also required when using these active ingredients to follow these additional regulations. It's important to remember that the primary reason for these new regulations is to prevent pesticide runoff into California waterways. The most direct route for pesticides to exit a property is through drains and drain intakes. No applications should be made directly to any drain or drain intake. Special care should be taken in applications made in these areas. Another main source of runoff is applications to horizontal hard surfaces such as driveways and sidewalks. Driveways and sidewalks are the primary routes for pesticide movement from the property. Pesticide applied to these impervious areas can run off with precipitation or irrigation water into adjacent drainages, which then lead to waterways. The regulations allow for certain types of low impact applications to horizontal landscape. To further minimize the potential for runoff to leave the property, only spray sections of the driveway or sidewalk that lead away from the structure when you see evidence of pests. It would be wise to err on the side of caution. If you're not sure where the pesticide will end up, don't spray. One of the most important aspects of complying with these new regulations is to have a clear understanding of key terms. Aquatic habitat means bodies of water such as lakes, reservoirs, rivers, perennial intermittent streams, wetlands or ponds, sloughs, and estuaries. Crack and crevice treatment means the application of small amounts of insecticide directly into cracks and crevices in which insects hide or through which they may enter the building. Example are openings occurring at expansion joints, between different elements of construction, and between equipment and floors. Only minimal amounts of pesticide should remain on the surface. Impervious surfaces means hard surfaces such as concrete or asphalt streets, sidewalks, and driveways. Spot treatment means an application limited to areas that will not exceed two square feet on which pests are likely to occur or have been located during the process of monitoring or inspection. Pinstream applications with a one inch or less footprint are permitted to horizontal or vertical impervious surfaces. Pinstream applications can be made to surfaces where there is no crack or crevice present. This provides an option for treatment to vertical and horizontal surfaces where insects may be present. The following applications are prohibited. Number one, to any site during precipitation. Number two, to the soil surface, mulch, gravel, lawn, turf, ground cover, or horizontal impervious surfaces with standing water, including puddles. Number three, to a sewer or storm drain or curbside gutter. Number four, to the following components of a constructed drainage system that drains to a sewer or storm drain, curbside gutter, or aquatic habitat, including visible drainage grate connected to a drain pipe, or a visible French drain or a landscape dry riverbed, swale, or trench filled with gravel or rock. Number five, regulations prohibit the application of materials within 25 feet of any aquatic habitat that is located down gradient from the application. This includes any horizontal surface including pre-construction termiticide sites, mulch, gravel, lawn, turf, or ground cover. Number six, to the pre-construction termiticide site within 10 feet of a storm drain located down gradient from the application. Regulations also prohibit the application of materials to areas where there is standing water, including standing water in the drip line or perimeter of plants, shrubs, or trees. 
As discussed in our segment on definitions, there are two types of horizontal surfaces that can be treated away from the structure. The first type of surface is impervious. Impervious surfaces can be treated with a crack and crevice treatment, pin stream, or a spot spray. In areas where pervious and impervious surfaces meet, pin stream, crack and crevice, and spot treatments can be made. Remember, although the new regulations allow for spot, crack and crevice, and pin stream applications to the driveway and sidewalks, try to minimize applications in these areas by only spraying when you see evidence of pests. This is the best practice for reducing the potential for pesticide contamination to surrounding aquatic habitats. Applications of pyrethroid granules are permitted to pervious surfaces. Any granules that fall on adjacent impervious surfaces must be swept back into the target area. Pinstream applications can also be made to vertical surfaces. Great care should be taken when making the pinstream application to horizontal and vertical surfaces to ensure that there is no runoff. For applications to vertical surfaces of a structure, you can use a number of methods. They include spot treatment, crack and crevice treatment, pinstream treatment of one inch wide or less, perimeter band treatment up to a maximum height of two feet above the grade level. All adjacent horizontal surfaces must be treated according to the regulations. For perimeter band treatments where impervious surfaces are adjacent to the structure, vertical surfaces can still be treated to a height of two feet. For the adjacent impervious surfaces, may be treated with pin stream, spot sprays, or crack and crevice treatments. Treatment to the surfaces of a garage door and the adjacent pavement should be avoided. These areas should be treated with a pin stream, crack and crevice, or spot spray application. One of the primary concerns we had with the new regulations is our ability to continue to use the power spray equipment that we've used over the years to make our standard applications. But we found with a couple of adjustments, we can continue to use this equipment and comply fully. One of the adjustments that we made is that we've reduced the pressure that we use the equipment at. Before we used to spray at around 100 to 150 PSI, we've reduced that now to about 50 to 60 PSI. The next adjustment we made is in the size of the nozzle that goes in the gun. By reducing this in size, we were able to make sure that the pattern fit within the regulations in all aspects around the property and the building. A few modifications to your equipment can go a long ways in helping you comply with DPR's new standards for applying pyrethroids around homes and structures and help limit the runoff of pesticides into California waterways. It's very important to remember that the goal of these regulations is to help reduce pesticide runoff into drains or waterways. The following application methods are exempt from the provisions of Section 6970 because they are the application methods least likely to cause runoff. A. Injection into soil or structural materials, such as bricks, concrete, or wood. B. Post-construction rod or trench termiticide application methods. C. Applications to below-ground insect nests or nests made of mud or paper combs. D. Application of baits in weatherproof bait stations or gel baits. E. Applications to aquatic habitats requiring an NPDES permit. F. Applications to the undersides of eaves. G. Foggers or aerosol applications. In this video, you have learned how to stay in compliance with the new pyrethroid application regulations. To review, there are 17 pyrethroid active ingredients that fall under the new regulations. When applying to vertical surfaces, crack, crevice, spot, and pin stream may be applied. On walls, a band application of no more than two feet high may be used. On doors or windows, you may only use pin stream, crack and crevice, or spot treatments. To treat horizontal impervious surfaces, such as sidewalks or driveways, crack and crevice, spot, and pin stream applications may be used. And to reduce runoff even more, only spray driveways and sidewalks when you see evidence of pests. Following these tips will keep you in compliance with the regulation and help protect California's valuable water resources. If you have any questions, contact your local county agricultural commissioner.